Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Tiffany Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today we're gonna to be talking about why you should have valerium in your medicinal herb cabinet and all of the amazing benefits that it has. So guys, before we get started, make sure you subscribe and like the video because we are on our way to our 10K um, goal, which is our 10K giveaway. So make sure you guys subscribe and then also go over to IG and follow Mighty Crop, who is our sponsor for our 10K giveaway. So let's talk about Valerium. Now I have talked a lot about Valerium and um, how I use it for pain and I've gotten a lot of questions about that and I want to kind of clarify what all Valerium does and how the different ways that you can use them and for different symptoms that you can use them for. Now when it comes to Valerium, Valerium is most known for its ability to be a sleep aid and to relax, relax the body, like relax the nervous system. Um, there's been tons of studies on valerium where people have studied this for years in actual like, you know, study studies to see what it would like, what the side effects and different things like that were with valerium. So it's one of the herbs that's actually more studied than a lot of the other ones you might come across. So this one works amazing with calming the body, calming the nervous system, and giving you relaxation. I've said before, if you guys watch my lemon balm video, <laughs> that a lemon balm is like nature's Xanax. Well, valerium is like nature's Xanax times three because it is a way more powerful herb than lemon balm is. So if a lemon balm isn't working for you to help you be able to sleep and relax, then valerium is going to be a, your next best bet. Now, um, why I use it as a pain reliever is that I have pain that is caused by muscle tension. So for me having a lack of sleep or it's insomnia or just worry or anything like that, I get um, like pain in my head where I clench my teeth or like my body is tense. So it's able to relieve my pain. Now, a lot of people have asked me how to use it as a pain reliever and I always say what type of pain that you have because if you're having things like liver pain or like you broke a bone or something like that you might want to use a different herb but if you're something if you're having something where it's muscle tension pain where it's a headache or it's tension like a TMJ issue or it's muscle spasms or even heart palpitations which um, the valerium works really good with the heart too as well to decrease heart palpitations. So if you're having stuff like that, like as a muscle pain, then yes, valerium is going to be a great source of herbs for that. Now let's talk about the uh, elephant in the room, which is the smell. <laughs> I actually don't mind the smell of valerium. I'm one of those people that I'm worried a lot, so the smell of valerium actually calms me down so like right when I start smelling it I'm just like okay all right I can do this I'm fine most people don't feel that way <laughs> so I've had a lot of people ask me how I prepare valerium because valerium tea is going to be strong valerium has a little bit of a sweet taste to it like a natural sweet taste so I actually pair it with things that are not so strong and also not going to do the same thing that valerium would do. So I pair it with things like mint, um, which is has a strong flavor, but isn't a, a really strong, strong herb. Um, another thing you can pair it with is rose hips. That's a good pairing. And then also passion fruit leaves is another really good pairing for it. I would stay away from pairing it with things like, um, like lemon balm, because lemon balm is going to do the same exact thing to it. Um, if you're going to be making like a really strong um, medicine, so like if you're pairing it with something like skull cap or something like that, um, I would probably put in a like a cooling herb to go with it, like mint, to where that way it kind of balances and then not use it for a longer period of time. Because the longer you use valerium with 
especially if you're combining it with stronger herbs, you can give yourself a little bit of liver damage. So do note that. Um, it's not in a lot of cases, but it is happening in some cases because valerium is a powerful herb. So it's not something that you want to take for years on end every single day or three times a day. You want to kind of let it do what it does. So relax you, get your body to where you're at a calm state, and then you're able to like live your best life. Now, if you don't mind the smell, <laughs> which is usually what people have when they're drinking it, then the other best way is just to add a little bit of blue agave. Um, agave is a natural sweetener, it comes from a plant, and it kind of just adds a little bit to the valerian, but takes down the uh, valerian paste, as, if that makes sense. So it kind of balances it out a little bit. The other thing you can do is you can put some valerian in a uh, like a bone broth or something like that. Like if you're making a chicken noodle soup, throw a little bit of valerian in there. It'll give it a little bit of a sweeter taste to it, but um, you won't really be able to tell. If you really want to cover it, do something like a pineapple chicken soup, and then that will really cover up the taste, but give you all of the amazing benefits. Um, I would also. Put it in like a little cheesecloth so then that way you can fish it out later so that then people aren't like you know chewing up like hard valerian roots while they're eating their soup because it is a root um now the other thing you want to do is make sure that for the highest benefits of valerian drying it is going to give you the highest benefit also making it as a tincture now you can make it as a tincture with a glycerin um if you don't like alcohol but the best way to get the most power out of your valerium is through alcohol. And it's because alcohol just really brings out a lot of the properties of the valerium. There's some valerium is one of those roots that it binds with alcohol really well. Now, instead of using a vodka, since valerium has such a strong smell um, and taste to it, I use a spice rum. This one is just a clear cruisin, it's a clear spice rum and it kind of has its own flavor from the spice of the rum, then you pair that with valerium and it doesn't give it such a crazy taste to it. If you're pairing it just with vodka, then you're going to get a lot of the, uh, the valerium taste to it. Also, if you put in a glycerin, it's going to make it sweeter, but it's not gonna be as strong as if you put it with an alcohol. You do wanna put it with a 40 proof or higher alcohol. Um, that way you can be able to extract as much of, or 40% or higher, so it'd be an 80 proof. So that way it extracts as much of the benefits as possible from the valerian root. It is a root, so roots tend to need to sit longer than they do if they are a, um, like a leaf or a stem or something like that because the roots just hold a lot more. So when you're making your tincture, I would probably let it sit for a minimum of six to eight weeks, if not longer. So all in all, I would definitely add this amazing herb to my medicinal cabinet because stress is not going anywhere, obviously. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you have a way of calming down your body. A lot of other pains in your body, like liver pain, stomach pain, upper IG pain, intestinal pain, all those different pains come from inflammation, which can be caused by stress. If your body's stressed out, it's not gonna function the way that it needs to. So being able to have something in your medicinal cabinet could be your first line of defense when you're trying to treat an illness. Relax the body, relax the mind, and then you're able to see if that was enough to solve the other problems or you're able to better pinpoint where that pain is coming from. A lot of people will say, oh, I have pain in my side, but you can't tell if it's your kidney, your liver, your gallbladder, your pancreas, your whatever, because it is very radiated. So if you calm the body, it'll take out that radiation pain, that pain that's radiating through all of your nervous system and just kind of let you pinpoint where it is. So it's very, very helpful, um, especially as a first line of defense for when you're trying to figure out what's going on pain-wise in your body, or it can just solve the problem by itself because it could be a muscle issue. So I hope that helped, guys. I hope you guys are building yourselves an amazing medicinal cabinet. I'm getting back to Medicinal Fridays every single Friday, although this one's up on a sun Saturday, but I wanted to make sure it came out. So I will see you guys next, sat next Friday with another medicinal herb. Until next time, grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food. Bye, guys.